wanted to upgrade the marker lights on the trailer since I only had two and one of them didn't work. I found a package of 10 little three quarter inch round LEDs that just pop right in and were really easy to install. Plus they ended up costing about a dollar a piece. On these lights they were polarity sensitive and the white one was positive and the black was a ground. I'm just doing a demonstration of how I connected them here. However, out on the trailer, the yellow and brown will be on the left side or the driver's side, and the green and the brown wires will be on the right or the passenger side. Trailer wiring is supposed to be universal, with the brown wire always being the positive wire. Typically, you'll run a negative or a ground wire to the frame, and a lot of times that's the place where it fails, so I decided to ground each individual light with its own ground wire. Also, since the boat trailer is going to be submerged in the water when we launch and recover the boat, it's important to make sure that all the connectors are waterproof and have heat shrink tubing around them. I found a brand called WireFi, and uh, they seem to be pretty well made. You just trim the bare insulation until it's about a quarter of an inch long, and select the appropriate gauge connector and slide it on. I also bought their ratcheting crimping tool which makes life a lot easier. So once you slide the wire in you just use the correct color dye which in this case is pink or red and crimp it in place and it's as strong as a solder or welded connection. The different colors represent the gauge wire in the appropriate connector that you use. The pink is for 22 to 16 gauge wire, and then the blue is going to be for 16 to 14 gauge wire, and the yellow from 12 to 10 gauge wire. Here I'm going to do a demonstration of the crimping process with a piece of the wire that's uh, the trailer wire, and then also the black and white wire for the LED. These wires are a lot thinner, but they really don't need to be very thick because they don't carry much power. In this case, the white one is the positive uh, on the LED, so once I trim it to size, I put it in the connector and then hold it in place and crimp it. The inside of the connector also has an adhesive lining, and then also it, when you heat it up, it will shrink by a factor of 3 to 1. Once the connection was crimped into place, it was as strong as the wire itself, and then I have a little micro-butane torch that I use to shrink the connectors. It works really well if you're in a confined area. In this case I'm working on stuff for a boat so I can get underneath um, in the bilge area or underneath the cabin and I can work on the wires that way with the little torch and I don't have to worry about a heat gun. On the left side of the connector here I could have heated it up just a little bit more to shrink it down to make it nice and watertight. So I just hit it with the torch again and it's good to go. Next, I selected a place along the trailer rail where I wanted to install one of the LEDs. I drilled a pilot hole and then I used successively larger drill bits. Even though the aluminum is pretty soft, it just makes it easier to drill in my opinion, especially when you're, the quality of your drill bits is dubious at best. These little LEDs are really easy to work with. Once you get a three quarter inch hole drilled, then you just pull the light out of the little rubber grommet that it comes with and push the grommet into place. Once that's done, you just feed the wiring back through the grommet and push the light into place. It doesn't attach anywhere and it's just held in place by the grommet in the hole. Makes it a lot easier if you need to replace one or remove it if you're going to do a repair somewhere. These are the tools that I use to do the light installation. I've got a micro-butane torch, the ratcheting crimper, some of the connectors, little wire cutters, an X-Acto knife, a wire stripper, and a nut driver to attach the grounding screws. Here you can see I'm actually making the connections on the trailer in fast motion, but just to show you what's involved, it's the same where I cut the wires, strip them, crimp them in place, and then use the torch to heat shrink the tubing. 
Each one of these connections took me about five minutes, no longer to make. That included cutting the wire, splicing it, and heat shrinking the tubing over top of it. Everything ended up costing about 20 bucks. The last thing I had to do was pre-drill the holes for the self-tapping screws for the ground wires and then put them into place with the impact driver. I think everything turned out pretty nice.